Global Change broadcast with founder and music ambassador Skylar Jett and presenter Tom Bryant and Ryan Shooter. And our special guest today is John Mader. Well, welcome to the show, John Mader. You are a diverse American drummer, educator and teacher of your craft for many years also. You've performed and recorded with Steve Miller, Pat Benatar, Booker T and Patty Austin, just to name a few. Uh, you're, you've been a professional musician since the age of 17 when you joined the San Francisco Bay Area band, The Uptones. Okay. Uh, you've opened for Billy Idol, UB40, Red Hot Chili Peppers, and you've also performed and toured with and opened for The Who. Uh, so welcome to the show and uh, please tell us more. Uh, th- uh, thank you for having me, you guys. Uh, Tom, thank you. Um, yeah, Tom, I'm going to hire you to be my publicist, man. That was- <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even go into all of it. There was loads more that I'll talk about in a minute. Yeah. You got the gig, man. You got the gig. Uh, let's see. Uh, hello, everybody out there. Uh, I am John Mater, and uh, yes, I'm a drummer, and uh, I've worked with all those people. And and uh, most recently, I've been doing uh, some work with uh, John Fogarty, and, uh, and I just finished a... Um, an L.A. run of Hamilton, the musical here at the Pantages Theater in Hollywood. Wow. I've also played it in uh, Puerto Rico with Lin-Manuel Miranda reprising his original role as Alexander wow. Hamilton. Yeah. And wow. played it up in San Francisco as well. And um, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, I think I offer a, maybe a unique perspective of um, uh, regarding uh, your mission. So I, so I spent some time reading about you guys online and I really love what you guys are doing. Thank it's you, brother. really awesome and sorely needed. These discussions really need to be uh, had uh, with, with artists in many different parts of the industry, right? Just, just to get an overall, uh, much more of a, uh, if I may, global view right. of of what's going on. And as you put so well in your website is, you know, this is not a, this is not a forum to, um, to complain about the industry. This is a forum to look for solutions. So um, more solution based and and which, which is something that is very rare in in our society. (laughs) That's right. Sorely needed. And uh, so, uh, yeah, so I just thought, all right, well, I could speak from my experience um, as more of an artist that is uh, kind of like a kind of like a contractor, you know, like um, mm-hmm. so. If you need if you need somebody to do a certain thing, and and you think I'm a good fit, then you call me. So I've done all those things, but yeah. then I've also I've done like did a Pepsi commercial with Grand Flash. And I did, uh, I played drums on the, um, the cartoon Garfield. I there did a bunch go. of those nice. episodes. Wow. Wow. Um, <laughs> yeah, you can hear, yeah, you can hear my work on, um, let's see, David Diggs and Raphael Cassell's uh, movie, um, Blind Spotting. Yeah. And mm-hmm. uh, so I played the drums. For- so, so that's the thing. I, I just kind of do... Um, a bunch of different things. I learned early on that the more, the, the broader my skill set, the more leverage I had Definitely. in kind of doing my own thing, which is something that I think is lost in a lot of young artists today and um, is the whole idea of leverage. And so uh, I, I give, I would like to give you a few very powerful examples and I won't mention the particular artist, because I don't really want to get involved in any uh, litigation. <laughs> there you go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> but you could say that you know these are all of these examples are from very famous, extremely wealthy artists. Yeah. So I got a call uh, one day. I got a call from an artist and um, uh, from a representative of a very famous artist, uh, Grammy Awards, the whole whole deal, and. Um, uh, many hit records, many number one hits. So I got a call from the representative asking me if I would like to um, be flown up to this artist's studio to do four days of work. And it would be kind of a working, sort of a working vacation, kind of casual. Yeah, yeah. 
question. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, great. Awesome. So, um, what's it pay? And he, they said, well, it's four days and it's kind of a working vacation. So there really isn't, there really isn't any pay. <laughs> and so I said, all right, well, okay. So it's a working vacation. So then maybe I can bring my wife up there because he lives on a big compound and has several guest homes. Yeah. And uh, so they said, well, yeah, it's not really going to be appropriate because we're going to be, you know, recording and stuff. And I said, oh, all right. Well, I understand there's some some good fly fishing up in that area. And and I, I like to fish. So I could bring my fly rod, maybe go out fly fishing for a few hours. And they said, well, we're going to be recording. <laughs> so, yeah, not really. And so I said, all right, well, I'm going to pass. Yeah, it's on vacation. Yeah, right. It doesn't sound like much of a and vacation. Said, and it got really quiet on the phone. And they said, well, this is a great opportunity for you. And I said, well, I'm not really seeing it that way. Hmm. So um, you're selling this to me as a working vacation. And it's four days. And I have to cancel everything else that I'm doing and go record with this artist every single day and not get paid anything. How about that? So the answer is no, I'm right. going to pass. Right, right. And so at this point, I am really offended. And so they said, all right, well, what would you need? And I said, well, the fact that you wanted me to go up there to do it for free in the first place has insulted me so much that I don't want to do it. Hmm. And I feel said, all right. Well, well, just give me a number. And I said, uh, all right, this is what I need. And so he said, okay, let me call you back. So he talks to the artist, calls me back, says, okay. So I get picked up by a private jet. I'm starting to hear full, that. Fully catered. Yeah. And I'm flown to, to the compound that he owns. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and the studio is first rate. And so here's the thing. No other musician negotiated for any pay. They were all going to do it for free. No, for yeah. vacation. So, Va vacation. <laughs> right, right. Exactly. Yeah. So, so um, the artist very smartly paid everybody the same amount that I negotiated for. And they should have paid you for being the negotiator for that. Yeah, true. Yeah, right, right. Exactly. <laughs> So that really kind of underscores, I think, much of the issue that's going on here. Right. So what we have is a dysfunctional relationship between artists and industry. Right. Mm -hmm. But there are two people that are always complicit in a dysfunctional relationship, right? There is the abuser and there's yeah. the codependent. There is a person who was allowing it to happen. Right. So, mm -hmm. so therein lies, I think, the entire, uh, much of the issue here where musicians are like, well, I got to get a leg up. You know, it's like, there's always the dangling carrot, right. always the dangling carrot. And it's like, it never changes. It's always the dangling carrot. It's like, well, hey, John, um, you know what? Until, John, you say, until you say no, until you yeah. say no. That's never that relationship is never going to change. John, you know what? They're still paying musicians what they paid them 30 years ago. Mm. Oh, yeah, sure. That's so right. when you you talk exactly. about when, when you talk about <laughs> codependent, the musicians don't have they, they don't know how to ask for respect. Right. Correct. I, I, I give you an example. You, you know, there's a club over there in San Rafael called New George's, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. But well, they got new ownership. The new owner announced that he could be paying bands five hundred dollars on the weekend. Yeah. Five hundred dollars. Okay. So, John, yeah. you say Skyler, I want to, want you to do this gig with me. I live way over Walnut Creek, and you live where you would live at, right? And you say, but you're yeah. gonna have to come to rehearsal three times this week to learn all my <laughs> material. Uh, wait, wait, yeah. wait, 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 right. wait, John. Wait, wait, John. Yeah. Hold, hold, hold. So maybe I spent forty dollars that week with gas and everything, just getting to you to learn your songs. Now, hold on, hold on, right? So, which means I'm only making $60 at the gig when I, when I get there. I've already spent 40 trying to do your gig, right? 
Okay, here's the cold part about it. So, so he says $500, $500, right? And after the $500, we're going to give you some of the money back from people from the door. Okay, so I asked, I asked the bartender, I said, hey, man, how, how much it costs for a shot? He said, oh, about $7 if you ask for some premium or more, right? So if you go stay there three hours, you spend three drinks, that's $21, right? And I said, how much? I said, how much is a bottle, man, for the for the booze? He says, ten dollars, <laughs> right? And I say, how much you make off a? Of, he said, uh, uh, off shots. He said, one hundred and twenty dollars. So almost four bottles paid the band off. Now he, the club owner, also tells you, I want you to go tell all your friends that you playing at my club, which means you're a promoter now. You got another hat on, right? To get people to his club to eat his food and drink all the booze and he go pay you $500. That's been going on for years. And it's not until musicians say enough is enough because you see those DJs, man, them guys might make, if they, if they get a thousand people and then they pay $20, that's $20,000. Wait, wait, the DJ is waiting for you to make the move, the, the music so he can go make some money. <laughs> mm. That's a cold game, baby. He making more than a whole band 20 times over. So I say, why don't we start doing our own concerts? So each one of us got our own fans, right? And we tell our own friend, fans to come. You get a thousand people that pay $25 to get, get in to see three bands. That's three bands. That's $25,000. The, the club owner made $6,500. Uh, each band made sixty five hundred, right? That's better than playing in a club, ain't it? Yeah, right. And these are all, you know, very telling anecdotes. That, and this this is so widespread, and it, you know, it's 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 everywhere in the industry. Sure. And this is why forever I I've always been a little conservative about my approach in the industry because especially with original music and original artists because the fact is is that it's a um it's a very unregulated industry <laughs> to say the there's least. no checks and balances yeah. and so people behave very very poorly like we need checks and balances i'm sorry you need some sort of law enforcement some something you need a judicial system. You need, you know, our, our entire, you need a boss in a corporate environment. So there's all these checks and balances built in everywhere else, except for the music industry. That's right. And so, and because of that, people behave really, really poorly. And then, uh, but including artists behave poorly because they allow it to happen. Now, look, I'm, I'm not saying that I've got all the answers, right? I'm right, just right. saying that sometimes, you know, we like it's, it'd be very easy for me to vilify that person who wanted me to fly up to uh, his compound and play for f four days for absolutely zero dollars. But he's a very shrewd businessman. It's, he tried it on you first. It's what the market will bear. Do That's I right. blame right. him? Do I blame him for like getting like killer players for rock bottom prices or, or free? No, I mean, it's and it's the same thing with, um, you know, uh, the uh, all the software now, uh, the streaming services. It's the same thing. It's like, am I going to go buy the record when I can just check it get out it, streaming it for free or get it on YouTube? I can listen to it on YouTube. It's like, well, what is that? You got you got no street relationship with people call and they tell me what the gig pays. It's like what? Like when I'm a, when I'm a contractor and I'm building your fence, do you call me and tell me like what you're going right. to pay me? Hell no! Like I tell you what I'm going to charge you, mm -hmm. right? And so this is why this is one of the many reasons why I started getting involved in music theater. It's it's a union gig. I've got rights. It's like yeah. And this is the thing that's really bugged me as from, from the point of view of being a, um, you know, a side man <clears throat> is that singer can wake up in bad mood, fire me. I've got no legal recourse. 
I've got more legal recourse flipping burgers at McDonald's yeah. for minimum wage than studying my craft for a minimum of uh, absolute minimum of 10 years to become a, a professional. And I've got less rights than yeah, somebody the burger no, at McDonald's. We, we got we to gotta regulate. We got to stimulate. Yeah. And, and that's right. Wanna get, get on a mission to... But that's that's kind of what we got going here. Only only yeah. thing is we we created an, a new genre that's actually old. It's just never been a platform for it for it, right? It's there never been re record yeah. companies for social conscious music. There's no festivals really for social social conscious. You know, there's no radio. So we that's the part we're creating, right? And and great. the great thing about it is, is there's a, a hundred and ninety two million. Uh, social conscious songs have been published, so there's an audience already there. We we just we just got to have a platform and give them a place to go. Hey, uh, Tom, you got a question? Yeah, I mean, we've already touched on on this, John. Your diversity in in how you what you play on and when you play. You did a, you've done a heck of a lot of musical theatre. You've played in Wicked, all these massive massive uh, theatre theatrical. Um, performances. How did you get into musical theater? Let's see. Uh, Rent, the, the musical Rent was coming to San Francisco for the first time um, about 22 years ago. And uh, they were looking for, uh, well, the, all the New York people came out to San Francisco and they wanted to hear <clears throat> all of the regular uh, musical theater guys at the time. And they didn't accept any of them. I mean, it was one of the first like really big contemporary musicals. And so I got called for it and I just thought, ah, I don't know if I really want to do this, man. Like, I think I need, I think I need to be like <laughs> 60 years old, fat, bald, and then, then I'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A, fr a friend of mine, uh, uh, Myron Dove, really uh, a great friend of ours, colleague of ours, oh, who yeah. was playing bass for Santana at the time. He said, man, I think you ought to do this. Like, it's won a lot of awards and it's kind of a big deal. And so I said, all right, I'll go check it out. So I, I went and auditioned. And because of all my experience playing, you know, all, the, all that experience playing with the uptones and, you know, playing with the red hot opening or, or co-headlining with Red Hot Chili Peppers and uh, Fishbone and, you know, all that great stuff that we were doing. Right. Like, you know, I, I was living in that aggressive world and I could I could play aggressively. And so <clears throat> I actually tried to lose the gig. I tried to play so aggressively that they would pass on me. <laughs> <laughs> I was beating the crap out of the drums as yeah. hard as I could because I just thought, this is musical theater. They're not going to want me. I'm too aggressive. It's fine. We'll right. both walk separate ways. Done. Right. And so we played the first song and the conductor, Boko Suzuki, phenomenal conductor, came over to me and said, do you want the gig? You're exactly what we're looking for. And I said, not if you're going to tell me to turn down because it's musical theater. Right. He said, right. no, we're going to have you in a plexiglass booth. You can hit as hard as you want. And I said, cool, I'm in. Wow. And and uh, that began it. But I was also a, a musically literate. I came up playing in all the school bands mm. and and I studied privately. And so that all really, really helped. And I played some of those musicals and in, in junior high and high school just for the experience. I just wanted to play like anything, yeah. anything. Yeah. So that's how it started. Then they uh, they called me after that the, uh, from New York and they said, well, we're doing this other show. We're going to premiere it in San Francisco. And so we're just putting it together. Can we fly you out to New York and, and pay you <laughs> just to observe? Just so you have a, just like a general idea of the vibe that we're going for. So when we get to San Francisco and we start rehearsing, you'll be, you know, a little bit ahead of the game. I said, yeah, great. So they fly me out. That show turned out to be Wicked. Okay. So I played the world premiere of Wicked in San Francisco, the pre-Broadway premiere with the New York cast, with the Dina Menzel, Kristen right. Chenoweth, the whole gang. And then they just started calling me for stuff after that. And I could sub out. <clears throat> like, I can, have a, I can have a sub. I can, yeah. 
I can. Like, Patty Austin calls me. Skylar and I have got a date with Patty Austin, and I can get a sub and fly out and do do that. Uh, you, can't, you can't beat that gig, man. Man, you know, and and I I have a pension. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. Right, like, <laughs> yeah. Who who gets that in the music business? You, a side man. Who, you 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 get that. that. So. So I think there's just there's there's great, great power in you developing as many tools as you can. I've taken business courses, which have really shifted my perspective, yeah. being able to put on a business lens as opposed to an artist lens, yeah. especially if it is the music business, it is art and it is business. So it behooves you tremendously as an artist to be educated in both of those worlds and i they, always always say this John. they can coexist like the I, is not a bad word it's really not it's your friend when Especially i don't talk wanna, to business you don't want to pay the mortgage i gotta really tell you that. When, when i go talk to business people yeah and they're making more money than us i don't have no so I don't have that kind of respect for them, that business people, because I'm going to show you why. I'll show you why. It's the music business. It's not the business music. Without the music, ain't no business. And so all those people making more money off, off of your craft and something you create, your God-given talent and all that stuff, like that, they should never make more than the people that create it. Never. That should never happen. Ryan, you got a question? I mean, I have a question, not necessarily about the business, but I, I've i always been fascinated by the drums. I've always wanted to play the drums. So, John, I read that, I mean, one, it's a, I read that you started playing the drums at like four or five years old, which is incredible. But I guess my question is, you, you're an instructor, is that correct? You, yeah, I do you, a lot of teach me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so growing up, I'm left-handed. And so in talking with like playing baseball was an issue, wanting to play the guitar, wanting to play the drums, when talking with like music teachers, it always seemed to be almost more hassle for them to teach a left-hander their craft. I guess from you as an instructor, obviously there's inherent differences. How easy is it to teach a lefty how to play the drums? Oh, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's easy. Um, so th there are a couple of issues to address with a lefty because mm -hmm. oftentimes young uh, players are kind of hybrids. Like maybe they write with their left or, or they write with their right or write with their left, or, you know, uh, it's uh, many different combinations. You might write with your left, but you might throw a ball with mm -hmm. your right. You might be left-handed, but you might be right footed. So I explore all of that to figure out whether or not, is it going to be a, are you going to play, kind of hybrid are you going to play like a lefty on a right-handed kit or you're going to be full-blown lefty on a left-handed kit but mm. it's not a big deal it's like well you move a couple of things over to the other side and flip-flop it it takes like two <laughs> minutes it's really not a big deal and yeah, I will you move to the other side i like that lefties lefties really have a um, a different feel like was so like the great will kennedy who is uh played for the yellow jackets still plays for the yellow jackets he's from the bay area he's a he's a lefty who plays a right-handed kit <clears throat> wow phenomenal um uh design the great design claiborne another guy from san francisco he's a he's a he's a lefty who plays a right-handed yeah he's a lefty who plays a right-handed kit and man the feel is just it's a different groove. It's a different flavor. And I love it, man. I love like what lefties bring to the table. It's, it's really cool. So yeah, I'm always really enthusiastic to get a lefty in there. Cause it's just, it's just and that that's kind of been a part of my thing is that like, I've always taught, I've always had a significant amount of students and I do some shows and then, you know, I'll do a little bit of movie stuff, a little bit of this and that. And so if anybody is trying to be funny with the business, I can I can get up and walk away from the table. That's right. And that is the most important thing when you are negotiating is 
the ability to get up and walk away from the table. I had an artist, an artist's wife was in the audience when I was playing down here in Los Angeles. And she approached me. This is an artist who outsold the Beatles in 1969. Wow. Very, very heavy artist and still very, uh, very active. A friend of mine said uh, a mutual friend of mine would like to meet you. And so she came up to me and said, hi, my name is so-and-so. And I heard the last name. I thought, oh, wow. Okay, great. And she said, uh, my husband uh, has been having some drummer issues lately, and we're looking for somebody to do some dates with us. Do you mind if I take some videos of you playing and send them to my husband? And I said, heck no, because this guy was the first concert I ever saw. The very first concert I ever saw was this, this artist. So very, very awesome thing for me that this was, this was going down. So yeah. this after I had moved to LA, this was just a couple of years ago, just, just before COVID. So I'm thinking, oh, this is great. Like this artist is really huge. Like this is, yeah. this is why I moved to LA. This is awesome. Right. And so I get a, I get a call, um, on the way home and they said, yeah, we really want you to do this. The manager and it's paying this. And I thought, well, no, that's really not the number I had in mind. Yeah. I didn't come I said, all the way down actually, here for that. They, actually, they left me a voicemail and I was just like, <laughs> well, I don't know about this. So yeah, yeah. I called some other, of my, my, my friends, uh, who, uh, who were very successful in the industry down here. And I said, okay, this is, what happened? This is what they said is paying. And they said, oh, no, 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 no. Uh-uh. Because <clears throat> the drummer that you're filling in for, I'm, I'm just filling in for the regular drummer. But the drummer right. who's filling in for you is easily getting double that. So I want you to go back and I want you to um, counter with double. And maybe they'll, and then they'll drop it down a little bit. And then you'll be in a really nice sweet spot. Right. Okay, so, hey, great. This was really difficult for me. I'm an artist. I'm feeling like, oh, this is going to be great for my career. It's going to be awesome for my resume. I have a lot of emotional attachment to this artist and his music. Right. Like, I just want to do it in the worst way, right? And so, yeah. and and I don't want to lose it. And so, I just like took a deep breath. I had a business coach at the time. I called her. We went over how to frame the counter offer. Right. And and, uh, and I sent it off and it was really difficult for me because I thought I'm going to lose this. I'm going to lose this. And I had, didn't hear from them in four days. For four days, I didn't hear from them. And my wife is saying, oh, you overplayed your hand. You lost the gig, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> all of a sudden. So all of a sudden I get a call and they said, great, you're on the dates. We're going to give you what you asked for. There wasn't even a counter. And so... Right. This is the thing, like the money is there, right. the money is there, but you have to, you have to ask for it. And I get it. It was really difficult for me. Yeah. It was even with my resume, I really wanted this. I really wanted this. My own detriment yeah. from the business. Well, listen, man, and I, I love you for coming on, brother. Thank you so much. Who were some of your favorite social conscious music artists? Oh man, come on. Earth, wind, and fire, dude. Woo! Yeah. Earth, wind, and fire. Okay. Um, James Brown, one of my one of my first favorite artists. And I got to tour with Maceo, Fred Wesley, and Pee Wee Ellis. I played Lincoln Center and we're doing uh Say It Loud, I'm Black and I'm Proud. That's right. Come on. That's so beautiful. That how is about, so so beautiful. How how about like Marvin Gaye and John Lennon, and uh, oh and, yeah, the, and, the list goes on and on. Yeah, yeah and, and Bob Marley and Nina Simone. Uh, oh, Tom, Tom, get a question in before we have to go. Before okay, I, we have to well, go. my quick question, I suppose, is why drums? What what drew you towards trying to learn the drums and starting out in the, on the uh, drum path? Okay, great. Yeah, I'll answer that uh, uh, briefly. I know you guys got to go. So <laughs> I, I went to a talent show. I was in kindergarten. Um, and, uh, my first year of school, five years old, I went to a talent show at my school. A third grader got up and played drums, uh, after the talent show. And that was it. My wow. God, I was just like, wow. yeah. I gotta yeah. do that. That's right. That's right. Wow. Thank you. Yeah. 
And Ryan, honestly, I just I was fascinated by the versatility that you had, uh, John. I didn't know if that was like a product of being on the West Coast or being in LA <clears> and just having that sort of afford, you know, all those different fingers out there. But I read that you played the drums on like four or five The Sims games, which I love. And I'm sitting there oh, going, yeah. like, I'm like, oh yeah, like video games need soundtracks and somebody's got to play these soundtracks. Right. So wow. I was like, wow, how does uh, same thing, right? It's gotta be that same type of thing. It's just like, it's out there. You just have to know where to find it and be in the right circles. I would imagine. Right. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, and developing relations, genuine relationships with people who are in a position to recommend you. Yeah. So when I, I was trying to break in, I asked, um, Vicky, Ra the great Vicky Randall, um, who was also from the Bay Area, and she was the percussionist vocalist on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno for many years. Yeah. I asked her when I was in my early 20s, how do you break into the, what do you do? Like, how do you make this happen? And she said, make friends. That's right. People hire their friends. People recommend their friends. It's like any other business. It's a relationship-driven business. Yeah. But I would recommend the artists, all the artists out there checking this out to read Keith Ferrazzi's book, Never Eat Alone. That's an yeah. excellent book about building genuine relationships. That's right. right. You don't yeah. call somebody out of the blue and say, hey, man, recommend me for a gig. Like, I get that all the time. It's like, right. I don't know you. Like, we don't have a relationship. Like, that, that's right. How offensive. You call me out of the blue because you want something. Like, let's go out for coffee. Let's go on a hike. Let's develop a genuine relationship. And then. And then once I know you a little bit, yeah, but yeah. my reputation is on the line as well. If I right. recommend, you, you know, uh, you remember fusion music, right? Of course. Yeah. Uh, you know, it was John LaPonte and, and, uh, all the cats, Stanley Clark and all those guys, they, yep. it's exactly what you're saying. You remember they played on each other's records, right? That's for, right. For, for years, right? The chick careers yep. and a, they played on. That's how they kept each other living. But by play, hey, I'm doing my record now. He bring bring the guys over here. And we'll do it again, right? It, it yep. was like that for a long time, man. John, John, I gotta say, man, I love you, brother, and it's, thank you for thank taking you, the time and your privilege to come come on our show and and express your feelings and stuff like that. And, I was so have, honored, and I and I hope that that. That my perspective is maybe useful for some people out there hmm. and maybe useful for your purpose. And if there's any way that I can be involved more, please don't hesitate. Please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Uh, Ryan, so great meeting you, Tom, really great meeting you as well. That you guys made my day. This was really awesome. No, it's really beautiful that we could talk like that from different, different places, man. You, you in California, my son's in Texas and, 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 and Tom and I are here in England, you know what I mean? So uh, we, we get to express, express in music. And like, like I said, I, I can use your, uh, well, we'd all love, love to have your endorsement for Music for Global Change, uh, lyrical content that heals, educates, and, and solve problems, right? And so, yeah. uh, you know, we want to start festivals like this, maybe labels like that, right? Yeah. And, 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 uh, and, and talk about people that write, conscious music music that is positive that 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 can take us you know inspire positivity you know what i mean yeah. so yeah bless up brother namaste all namaste right. thanks thanks so all right, much, John. all, all right, right much love all right thank you very much much, 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 much right. love brother thanks so much Thank you so much for watching. To stay up to date, please click subscribe and hit the bell. You can also join our group on Facebook and find us on LinkedIn and Instagram.